Welcome to the fourth part of our MXXX tutorial video series. In this tutorial, we will apply what we have learned so far and create a couple of real-world examples. The strength of MXXX is its flexibility and ease in routing multiple effects. You don't need a complex setup of various channels in your door anymore, where things quickly get confusing. In MXXX, you have everything at hand in a visual and intuitive setup. Basic types of use cases for MXXX are A. When you just want to use multiple effects, serially or in parallel. B. When you want to post-process affected signals. Or C, when you want to treat different parts of the original signal in different ways. We will look at examples for each of these cases now. Case A is pretty straightforward. You just arrange the desired effects on different lanes for parallel processing. Since the signals on all lanes are summed up, adjust the output gain to retain about the same volume as the input. You can choose a dry-wet ratio for each effect. Alternatively, you can leave one lane for the dry signal, set the dry-wet ratio to 100% for each of the effects, and use a utility block for each effect to control its intensity. That way, you have a more direct control over the dry volume, which, in the first example, adds up over all of the parallel lanes' dry-wet ratios. For a serial setup, put the effects one after another on the same lane. Experiment with the order, as it can influence the sound a lot in some cases. A very common example of case B, the post-processing of wet signals, is reverb, which, for example, often needs to be equalized. Though Melder's reverb effects already include post-EQ modules, in MXXX you are more flexible. You can even use auto-dynamic EQ, or also multiband dynamics if you like. Just insert the convolution or reverb module on lane 2, so on lane 1 you have the dry signal. We'll set the reverb to 100% wet, and we can use a ratio block to control the dry-wet ratio. Now on lane 2 we can treat only the wet signal. Let's insert an EQ and low-cut the reverb signal, so bass range punch remains in the dry signal, but does not introduce mud in the reverb tail.
Now we can, for example, add a slight chorus to have a little smoother reverb. To separate the reverb a little better from the dry signal and make the overall sound clearer, we can damp the transients before the reverb effect, so it will be much softer. We are now directly led to case C, different processing for two parts of a signal. These parts can be left and right, mid and side, or, in this case, transients and sustains. We use the transient module two times to split the signal and have one lane for the transients only and one for the sustains only. To do that, we choose the transients mode on the first lane and normal mode on the second lane, but with transients dampened to a minimum. We'll use the mixer instead of ratio module this time, as we want both signals mixed at original volume. Now, the reverb works only on the sustains, and the transients get through completely dry for maximum clarity. And we can, for example, apply a little gain, or use an EQ on the transients to emphasize them even further. Same works nicely with a chorus. That's all for now, folks. See you in our next video.